I was born in a military family. My father was a high-ranking officer of the Soviet Army General Staff, uh, inspector of land forces, uh, stationed outside of USSR in every quote-unquote brotherly country or liberated country of the world. Uh, I graduated from Oriental Studies Institute affiliated to Moscow State University in 1963. I started working with Novosti Press Agency, the biggest propaganda and ideological subversion organization of USSR, which is directly under KGB. Ostensibly, it's a, it's a public news agency. Novosti in Russian language means news, but there are no news. It's mainly propaganda. Uh, my first job was a translator with Economical Aid Group in India. We were building refineries and, and other industrial projects in public sector, socialist sector of India. My last job was press officer of the Soviet Embassy in New Delhi. I defected in 1970, uh, came, landed in Canada, worked for several years as a producer of um, Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, overseas service in, in Russian language, similar to Voice of America. Then I was teaching at uh, University of Toronto Political Science Department, uh, McGill University Slavic Studies, and School of Journalism Ottawa, in, uh, Carleton University in Ottawa. Uh, last year I uh, joined a small Russian language publishing house here in Los Angeles, and, and now I'm a political analyst for weekly Panorama newspaper. Uh, Lumumba University language instruction was my so-called extracurricular activity, uh, which is usually given to Soviet young communists as a non-paid job to prove loyalty to the party. I was instructing students from Asia, Latin America, and Africa before they entered a, an ideological indoctrination uh, uh, class. Uh, it was mainly l uh, Russian language instruction, after which the students usually join two-year or three-year extensive course in Marxist-Leninist ideo ideological indoctrination, plus their own sub uh, subjects of, of their choice, uh, medicine, physics, uh, chemistry, whatever. Uh, if, they, if after uh, five or six years studying, they they are proven to be, well, flexible, loyal, uh, cynical enough to follow the Soviet foreign policy. They are being transferred to a KGB school for, t for, the, uh, for a period of two years, after which they are being dispatched back to their native countries and become so-called sleepers, uh, uh, the word from, originated from sleeping. For several years they sleep in their own countries doing nothing. Sometimes they are pursuing their own careers, become lawyers, doctors, uh, teachers, um, taxi drivers, barbers, and they spring into action after many years of destabilization of their own countries as Soviet agents. Therefore, all of a sudden you discover uh, well-established lawyers in, in a country like Nicaragua who are, for some strange reason, are uh, bitterly against quote-unquote American imperialism and idealistically for Soviet uh, Marxist-Leninist imperialism. Uh, I joined Novosti Press Agency uh, before I graduated from the Oriental Studies Institute where I studied Hindi and Urdu, two languages of Indian subcontinent. Urdu is the language of Pakistan and Hindi is the language of India. The journalistic part of my training was ordinary journalism, mass media, uh, uh, communication theories and, and studies. Together with that, we had a very extensive training in uh, military, civil defense, intelligence, and ideological subversion. So even before I graduated, I started working with Novosti Press Agency, first as a translator, interpreter, and guide with foreign delegations who were invited to USSR and who were shown all the beauties of socialism and dispatched back to their countries to explain to, uh, to their uh, uh, people how beautiful is socialism. Uh, my role was directly linked with KGB activities of, of brainwashing and psychological assessment of these guests. If they showed any sign of flexibility, which means uh, they showed that they were recruitable, uh, I passed them over to professional KGB recruiters and from there on they were actively being involved in ideological subversion and propaganda, both in USSR and in their own countries.
Well, decision of, of course was very painful and, and difficult. But on the other hand, I didn't have any illusions or illusions about the Soviet system and, and communist or socialist system. It's the most rotten and unworking system in the world. Uh, some people call it state capitalism, socialism, centralized planning, whatever. It doesn't really matter what kind of name you attach to the system. Basically, if you're a religious person, it's a devilish satan satanistic system which appeals only to the most primitive negative side of human nature. Uh, it, the, the basis of that system is denial of private property, human dignity, and, and personal responsibility, and of course any religion, uh, religious affiliation of a human being to God as a supreme being. Uh, my dissatisfaction, disillusionment, if you, if you can call it, because I never was illusioned uh, uh, with, this, with the communism, started as early as um, age from age six I guess uh, the first shock uh, was after the Second World War uh, when most of the children of my age understood that United States is the friend uh, with whom together uh, Soviet people defeated Nazism German fascism all of a sudden turned into an enemy uh, and all of a sudden the propaganda turned 180 degrees around and we were brainwashed in the spirit of hatred to everything which is American. But how could you explain to a child of six years old who owes his survival to American spam, condensed milk, egg powder and things which you probably people never remember because nobody eats them these days. Spam meat, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> how can you explain to them that these delicious things came from an enemy who wants to subvert and destroy us. It's impossible because the child remembers when he was hungry, he was eating spam and, and drinking condensed American uh, milk with the American eagle on the, on the level. So all the efforts of the Soviet propaganda to convince me that America is bad was futile, naturally. That was the first shock. The second was this 20th Congress of the Soviet Communist Party when Khrushchev revealed the atrocities of Stalin terrorism and um, murder, systematic murder of millions of innocent people. That was another greatest shock. Uh, and the third shock, of course, when I was already grown up, a, a student, invasion into Czechoslovakia in 1968. That was the last point. Uh, and when I was in India acting as a Soviet official, uh, so the diplomat, I understood that sooner or later I have to defect and to explain what exactly I was doing in India. I fell in love with that country because um, at that time this country didn't do any harm to any neighbors, least of all to the Soviet Union. And yet we did so much harm to that country that I decided to defect and explain it first to Indians, then to American uh, politicians, intelligence communities and media. Unfortunately, I didn't have much success because my stories were treated with a great skepticism. I was called paranoid, McCarthyist, fascist, Cold War maniac, and other names which I don't want to mention here. And um, it took me quite a number of years to understand that I'm talking to people who are trying to prevent average American from knowing the truth about communism. <laughs>